Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 31 now, verses 1 to 6. Let's read. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor-bearer, and all his men died together that same day. Saul, the troubled, the troubled king, the first king of Israel, and this is the conclusion. Jonathan, who we saw was heroic and uh, faithful and a good person, Saul, uh, Jonathan dies, Saul's son. So this is a, a grim situation here, and then we have Saul here basically committing suicide so that the enemy won't get him. Uh, what can you say about this section? This is uh, this is going to mean there's going to be a new king in Israel, and it won't be Jonathan, and. Then we come to 2 Samuel, although we're not going to do 2 Samuel yet. We're going to finish tomorrow morning with 1 Samuel. We're going to go over to the New Testament for a while. But uh, what we have here is the sad end of Saul. Uh, why does God allow uh, good men to die? Saul maybe maybe doesn't qualify so much in our mind as, as a good man. But Jonathan, Jonathan his son, uh, very much of the, the helper of Israel, but Jonathan dies here, and there's no big commentary on it. He's just, he's just allowed to die in battle with the Philistines. Why does God allow stuff like that? Well, God has his purposes. We don't always understand his purposes. And in the moment, we feel like, you know, well, why not? Here's a young man caught down, cut down in the height of his youth and energy. God allows these things. And then Saul, you know, Saul doesn't want to fall into the hands of the Philistines. And so Saul kills himself. So there's another kind of grim piece here. Does God, is God, is God for that? Is that something in, in God's uh, bag of goodies that if every now and then when things are really tough, you can just go kill yourself? No, the Bible doesn't tell us that. The Bible, again, tells us what happened historically. It tells us what actually happened. It doesn't mean God's endorsing each each and everything that happens. So here we're going to basically come to a conclusion of the period of Saul. David obviously won't be harried by Saul anymore. Saul dies alone, without God, hopeless. And it's in that hopelessness that Saul takes his own life. God wants us to thrive. In, in John 10, verse 10, he says, I want that they can have life and have it more abundantly. He doesn't want us to have life more and more hopelessly. But Saul went away from God, and God stopped answering him. Uh, Saul started off, it seems like, well, but Saul comes to a tragic end. This is the time when Saul finally dies. Falls on his own sword, just utterly without hope. Remember that the devil always wants to rob us of any and all hope. And the further away from God we get, the less hope we're going to have. And so here is Saul uh, succumbing to that. God isn't going to leave Israel to uh, break into pieces and fall apart uh, here totally because because the king is dead. God's going to provide another king. In fact, we found way back in this in this book, we found that David is going to be the next king, and that, that time is coming. In fact, that time is very imminent here. But Saul dies, and this is the end of that uh, very troubled period where there's all kinds of mayhem and wickedness, and we've just spent uh, 31 chapters or so working our way through all that. God is on his throne. He doesn't abandon his people. And even in times of distress and apparent dis uh, total collapse, God's still going to do good things for his people. Let's pray. Your Father in heaven, we are sad to see the, the conclusion for Saul's life, a hopeless life, apart from you. And we certainly pray that none of us will ever come to such a state. Lord, help us to be people, men and women of hope, following along, even though we have only a, a window, a certain period in history when we are there, may that time be useful for your kingdom. So Lord, we're glad that you're on your throne. We're glad that you don't abandon your people. Something that looks like it's the absolute total end of Israel is not, but in the moment it looks pretty grim. So Lord, help us always to see beyond the moment to your, your purposes and your greater glory, even when we don't understand them. We know that you are our king. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we can come through any and all emergencies that we face or that the people of God face on our watch. God be with you.